So hey everybody, welcome to Go Bold. My name is Jody Atariwala and I'm your host. And today we are in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and we are visiting with 402 Squadron, which is called the City of Winnipeg Squadron. And I'm joined with Warrant Officer Chad Folds. You got it. Awesome. Chad, thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So as I do with all of my guests, I start by asking what made you join the military and what made you pick the branch that you did? So I joined the military going way back to when I was three years old. My uncle's dad was the wing commander in Comox. And I just thought, oh, it's such a cool space, seeing all the, all the aircraft flying around. And then he went to Esquimalt. I got to see the ships and I got a tour of a submarine just as a little boy. Um, and I guess I really wanted the adventure. Um, I'm from Nanaimo, so I was kind of between the two. Sure. And just based on the adventure alone, and I couldn't be an ASOP direct entry at the time when I joined. So the recruiter did an awesome job and he said, if you want to be a sensor operator, start in the Navy. And so I started as a NESOP. And I did that for six or seven years before switching to ASOP. Oh, interesting. So my time in the Navy was great and I learned a ton of stuff and it was very applicable to flying on the uh, aircraft I'd been on. That's really cool because, you know, it's not, it's not common, but it's not unheard of where people switch branches, right? And so that's pretty neat. Like, uh, so now here you are in the Air Force and you are here at 402 City of Winnipeg Squadron. Um, tell me about the mission of this squadron and what your function is here. Sure, our mission is to train AXOs and ASOPs and my job is I'm a basic ASOP instructor. Okay, excellent. And so for those that aren't familiar with what an AXO and an ASOP is, perhaps you could explain that. Yeah, AXO I believe is Air Combat Systems Officer. Right. And uh, they run all the tactical management on the Aurora, for example. Okay. And the ASOPs are Airborne Electronic Sensor Operators. So we operate the sensors, both acoustic and non-acoustic on the Aurora. And all the sensors on, say, the Cyclone. Uh, we have... Uh, special Forces aircraft, we operate those sensors, or UAVs as well. Right, so you're referencing the Mazer aircraft, the eventual R-Pass, which will be this guy. You bet, okay, your audience is obviously familiar with oh, that. Oh yeah, okay, so absolutely, perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, that, that's super, super cool. And um, and then, of course, also the Kingfisher, that'll also come Yeah, online. that was my previous platform. Nice, yeah. nice. So, to do your function here at 402 Squadron, um, you guys are flying the C, is it the CT? CT. CT-142. Correct. Um, now it's a it's a derivative of a Dash 8, but I think it's just colloquially called the Gonzo, or is that? It is, I mean, the nose is what's gonna <laughs> give it away its nickname. We have a big radar in there, and that's what we use primarily for ASOP training. Right, right, yeah. awesome. Well, if you don't mind, let's just kind of walk around briefly of the aircraft. You can point out some features of it, but I guess really the the main <laughs> the main feature is the nose. It's, yeah, it's it's mostly just a regular uh, Dash 8 on the outside, Okay. but the bread and butter of the ASOP trade is to do homings and it's also a good opportunity to assess the candidates of how good they can do basic aircraft uh, operations okay. and so we all we ask them is to learn everything about this aircraft and come flying and uh, just practice homings 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 okay before and going to their operational squadrons to do more training on the aircraft that they will eventually fly on right and when you say homings wh what exactly does that mean a homing is putting the plane over top of a vessel Okay. Or, or a point of land, for instance. And so we are in charge of the navigation of the aircraft, and we're going to tell the pilots where to turn and uh, get the plane on top. Right. And so that's really uh, a function of... of um, so it's not just operating the sensors, but it's also crew coordination, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And so that, that's a huge part of what we're doing here at the school is crew coordination, the crew concept. And we're starting off with a very small crew and doing easy maneuvers. And eventually, if they go to other uh, other platforms, it gets more and more and more complex depending on the missions. Right, right. Now, for this aircraft, um, how many people are in there? Like, it, it, for for your training mission, um, it, are the pilots also part of the training construct, or is it just the back end operator? They are part of the training concept. So, two pilots in the cockpit, two instructors and then four students. You can have a third instructor depending on what's going on as well. Okay. Um, but the pilots are trained to help us train. Right. So we're only doing uh, rate one turns and these type of things. And it's just really good back and forth communication because ASOPs have to be able to communicate 
to the pilots across all platforms. Right. So it's giving them a first chance to experience the back and forth, even for minor things like checklist call and response, mm -hmm. but eventually it gets more and more in depth, of course. Interesting, okay. And so then for the two types of courses, um, uh, how long are each? Uh, because for the AXOs and for the ASOPs like me, I guess it's different. Right? I can't speak for the AXOs, okay. actually. Um, sure. Their course is just under a year, I believe. Okay. But for the ASOPs, for instance, we just had a course arrive about a month ago. And given that there's going to be Christmas break uh, and small breaks in between, they should finish in February. Okay. So roughly four months. Roughly, uh, but it's, it's going to depend on serviceability and, and Christmas breaks and these sure. type of things. Yeah. Sure. And so here at the squadron, you guys have four of these aircraft? I believe so. Nice. I'm new to the nice. squadron, so right, don't, right. Yeah, no, no, don't no. quote me on these, <laughs> these details. Well, yeah, no, I think I noticed one out here, and there's three here in the hangar. So, no, it's super cool, and they're so distinctive, right? Anywhere they go in the country, it's that's like... That's right. Uh, there's know. not a lot of blue military aircraft flying right, around, that's right. for sure. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Well, now, you are going to be very kind to allow us to come inside and take a quick peek and see how the configuration yeah, is. Yeah, I hope you got a, a light. I can grab my flashlight, but yeah, that'd be it, awesome. it's dark in there. We don't have ground power on it, but let's go have a look at where we train. Awesome. Awesome, thank you so much. Did you want to see the cockpit? Yeah, sure. All right, take a left. Right on. So this is um, obviously a, more of a legacy uh, legacy look, no, no real glass to it. Right, it's not a full glass like maybe you've seen on the Kingfisher. Right, right, but functional. Like I mean, you know, there's a there's a bunch of uh, dash shapes all over the world, so makes it supportable. All right, so looking down here, it's just like a regular dash eight, but we don't have seating on both sides. We're not here to make money. Right, right, <laughs> right. Um, so here's our, our our crew systems. So typically we'd have. A student here, okay, and then an instructor in between, and then your second student, and then we repeat that further down. Student three, instructor number two, and student four. Oh, interesting. So we also have a crew rest spot in case we want to have another instructor up. We have to be checked as well. Right. So sometimes we're checking the students and being checked ourselves. Interesting. To maintain a good standard for uh, teaching. Right. So that's interesting. If you don't mind just kind of, sh uh, uh, yeah, so we get a... Uh, kind of a yeah a deep view of that so that's interesting so two banks of of training um uh i guess stations yeah yeah, yeah so each instructor does two at once right okay and so, you know like you're not gonna see this sort of stuff on your civilian aircraft we got our oxygen masks and right. regulators and all that sort of stuff right wow that is super cool um yeah and so it, it, this is all it, it, in essence, and I guess I'll just get you to maybe, yeah, Light perfect, myself, that's sure. perfect, yeah. So this is all in essence to um, to train people in the Air Force to operate op uh, the sensors and the tactics of op uh, of flying operational. Yeah, aircraft. as as ASOPs, we don't really touch on tactics here like the AXOs do. Sure. Um, we're just trying to make sure that they can function in the air at the speeds we're going mm -hmm. and uh, operate the sensor. It's, on here is really just the radar and of course the communications part. We have multiple radios. So we get our students to radio back and forth and uh, you know practice things that we hope to never use like uh, Maydays for example. Right, yeah. right. Well, you know what, this has been awesome, Chad. Like, I mean, yes, you know, there's uh, there's no ground power, so there's no lights in here at the moment, but uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time to, to walk us in uh, because out of all the years that I've been covering the Air Force, I've seen these aircraft many times, but I've never been inside. So, well, thanks yeah. for having me, Jody. Yeah, I'm glad no. you got got to see it finally. Yeah, no, I really appreciate your time, and thank you also for everything that you do. Um, you know, this is a cool mission, and uh, yeah, uh, hopefully, looking forward to seeing you in the fleet later on. All right, it's my, been my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chad.